Hello and welcome to today's session on group discussion. Before we begin, before we start talking and I start telling you about requirements and what group discussion is all about, the question is why do you need this? Do you need skills for a group discussion only to get a job? Then those of you who are already working, should you be here? Or do you need group discussion for the rest of your life? Now the answer to that is, you need group discussion skills today, tomorrow, and you needed them yesterday. Let me tell you a small incident. I have a very close group of friends. There are five of us. We do everything together, whether it's watching a movie, whether it's going for a party, whether it's working on an assignment. We do everything together. Now, out of five of us, whenever we have to take a decision as to which movie to watch, where to go, whose birthday party will be held where, we have a weekend, which city should we drive down to, there's always a huge discussion. And one thing we noticed over the past five, seven years is that when this one friend of mine called Max when Max is not around, we always end up having an argument and not a discussion. But somehow, when Max is around, any kind of decision is taken quickly, everybody's views are heard, and everyone is happy about the decision. On the other hand, when he's not, we always have one of the remaining four of us who gets up and says, fine, I'm not coming. And then again, super max to the rescue. Now why do you think that's happening? Is Max a magician? Does he have magic? Does he hypnotize all of us? Is he a leader? Do we follow what he says? No. We're all at the same level. But the truth is that something I realized much later which is that Max had excellent group discussion skills excellent negotiation skills and Max was an excellent listener. Now this is the reason why you and I need to work on our group discussion skills because we don't only use it when we are sitting in front of a panel of five people who are testing us for an interview. We don't only use it when we need to get into an MBA school and we do not only use it when we are sitting through an appraisal for a promotion. You're using a group discussion every single day of your life. Whether it is discussing with your mother what she should cook tonight, whether it is negotiating with your father for a little later deadline to come back home after a party, whether it is permission to use your brother's room or your brother's computer, or it is discussing things with people in your class over a project, discussing with your friends where to eat, what movie to watch. Everything becomes much easier if you have the correct group discussion skills. Someone once said, it's amazing how easy it is to convince others or to argue if you have the correct group discussion skills. And let's see through our session today, what it is that results in this correct group discussion skills. What are we talking about? Why again are we using it? Let's go through that. One for everyday life, one in various interviews. Let's not forget that part. Yes, you are being noted down, you are being marked on pen and paper. When you go in for an interview, whether it is to join a new institute or to join a new company. At any level, you are being marked on your group discussion skills. What do they really do in an interview? What are they really testing? What is it that they want to see when they say, let's have a GD? They're testing your ideas. They're testing your thinking. They're testing how quickly you respond, how quickly you get angry. Are you a good listener? Are you contributing? Do you keep quiet just because everybody around you is talking? All of this is being tested through your group discussion. That 10 minute or 12 minute or 20 minute discussion that you have says a lot about you. So it's a lot easier when you know 
what to expect when you know what is it that will give you those extra points in a group discussion. Another very important thing that a number of companies will test is also your leadership ability. So do not forget whatever we discuss in today's session just because you already have gone for that job and you already have passed your interview. A year down the line, two years down the line, you will want to apply for a higher position. And then again, your group discussion skills are being tested. Even at your current level, in the, if today is your first day at work, in the next one week you'll have a discussion, whether it's when you're being introduced to people around, whether it is meeting your superiors, whether it is simply contributing to ideas in your team or with clients, you're still being tested every single minute of the day. Let's think of a few reasons. We're talking about group discussions in the company. Let's think of a few reasons where and in what situations are group discussions held. Now group discussion as a whole, to take you through a little bit about it, can be divided or categorized into formal and informal group discussion. What is it that falls under formal group discussion? One are the meetings we spoke about, the meeting to discuss anything, the meeting to discuss a new project, or the meeting to update a project, a meeting to introduce you to people, an annual, an, a weekly meeting, a monthly meeting, an annual meeting, just to find out where the organization is. It can happen at your team level, it can happen at your department level, it can happen at the organizational level, it could be through various cities, various locations, various countries. Today we have video conferences, we have WebEx, we have all kinds of technology that helps us interact with people sitting all the way across the globe. But does that mean Tech, just because we have good technology, it means we be able to get our ideas across? No. That's when good group discussion skills comes into play. You can have meetings for conflicts, number of conflicts arising in departments. You have a meeting to resolve that. Now, without good skills to participate in a meeting, in a discussion, how will you ever reach a resolution? You may have the best ideas. But you need to have the skills to put forth those ideas confidently and correctly. Another different type of formal group discussion could be problem solving or interviews like we discussed earlier. Problem solving in the sense it need not be a big issue. It may just be a discussion between you and your subordinates or you and your superiors because problems arise. We don't have to be afraid of them. Problems arise every now and then, but we need to be able to contribute to solve those problems and that contribution is aided with good group discussion skills. If your organization tomorrow has an event, you want to celebrate an annual day, you want to celebrate Independence Day, you wake up and say, hey, this Christmas, let's do something. Let's color the walls. Let's decorate our bay. Let's have a party, let's have a get together, let's have a team building activity. There's no occasion, it's not Christmas, it's not New Year, it's not the annual day, but you feel the need for a little bonding in your team, in your organization. You want to have an event. You have a client coming in, you want to have an event. That event will start only when you can contribute your ideas to the concerned people. How do you do that? With group discussion. So this is where in an organization, in a college, in an institute, this is where you use your group discussion skills. This is where you will be tested now and again. Nobody may be sitting down with a pen and paper in their hand in these situations. But what are they doing? The fact that they're listening to you, the fact that they agree with what you're saying, all contributes to your skill set as a good orator, as a good contributor, as someone who knows what group discussion is about. A couple of other places, informally, parties, weekends, day-to-day -day activities, where should I buy my groceries from, which is the best mall to go to, where are the biggest discounts. You start talking. If I stand up and say, no, you will not go to Reliance, 
no one's going to listen to me. But if I stand up and sell my idea and say, all right, this is the reason why you don't go to Reliance or you should go to Reliance. It has the best and the most fresh vegetables. This, the fact that someone's listening to me, the fact that they change their current vegetable vendor and walk into a Reliance Fresh shows my skill set as someone who's good at group discussion. It shows how well I can handle and win my discussions. There is something called winning a discussion. You win a discussion when either you've accepted a good idea from someone else or someone else has accepted an idea from you. When both parties are convinced, whether you've been the listener and agreed with person B or whether person B has agreed with you, doesn't matter. But both parties agree, that's a successful group discussion. Another good idea is to keep track of current affairs. The most common discussions start from current affairs. You know, there used to be a time where I would not really follow the news. I mean, I'm not a big news fan. I don't sit down religiously, you know, early in the morning with the newspaper in my hand or turn to switch channels from one news channel to the other before I sleep. I'm really not a big news person because it kind of depresses me sometimes. But over the past uh, couple of years, every time I sit down with maybe my husband's friends or uh, my mother's friends or my brother's friends or, you know, even my friends, we're sitting eating dinner, chatting, there's no movie, there's no going out. We're just sitting and hanging out. And somewhere after the little gossip of who's doing what and who got married and who got divorced and who's traveling and all of that, when there's no other gossip left, the next hot topic is current affairs. So someone's talking about a tsunami being expected in a certain area. Someone's talking about politics. Someone's talking about who, which company is going to shut down. Someone's talking about the stock market. And oh my God, do you know what I used to do? I used to sit there and smile. And then start looking around. And then start counting the number of bulbs in the room. Or keep eating. Because I didn't follow current affairs. So here's my tip to you. Whether you're in an interview, whether you're in eating lunch in office, whether you're in college, whether you're with your friends, every now and then you get a chance to show off your group discussion skills. And trust me, after today's session you'll have excellent skills, so you should show it off. But you get that chance to show off your group discussion skills with the help of current affairs. Keep track of what's happening. I learned my lesson. So keep track of what's happening. Watch that news. Even if it's not your favorite channel, watch a little bit. Read the headlines. Read the articles. So you know more than just the headlines. Because knowing things is important. If you want people to listen to you, and I don't mean be Adolf Hitler, if you want people to just listen to when you talk, everyone wants to be heard when they're talking. But you need to be at the same level. You cannot expect a group of people who are sitting and discussing the share market to listen to you if you start talking about who Shilpa Shetty just married. Because there will be times now and again where you are not surrounded by people who are interested in e-news. People who are probably interested in the stock market. At least you know what's happening. You can, if you cannot contribute, you can at least be part of the discussion by listening by understanding and tomorrow by any chance if there is a topic that people around you are discussing and this is a very important tip when it comes to group discussion tomorrow if you're in a scenario where people around you are discussing things and you don't have anything to contribute or maybe you don't even understand the topic too well don't count the bulbs like me but listen listen to what they're saying you may learn something new if you don't know how the share market works, you'll learn a little bit. So you'll attend one discussion, two discussions. The next time you're sitting with that same set of friends, 
you have something to contribute and you understand exactly what's happening. So you're saying yes, you're nodding or you're laughing or you're surprised at the correct places. For all you know, someone's saying something that's very shocking and you're laughing away because you didn't understand. I'm not saying that happens, it's happened with me, it could happen with you. So keep track of your current affairs ever. Like I said, if you don't know what the topic is, cannot contribute, it's all right. Don't put yourself out, don't get up, walk away, don't start daydreaming, listen. Listening is as important as speaking in a group discussion. You can speak for 30% or 20% of the time, but if you are actively listening for the remaining 70 to 80%, you are successful in that group discussion. All right, let's move on from here. When we talk about formal group discussions, we've discussed discussions in friends already. But now coming to a more formal level, when you talk about organizations, whether it's interviews or a simple meeting in an organization, there are certain things that tend to be common when a group discussion takes place. One of them is the number of participants. More often than not, when you step in for an interview, the number of participants will be between 8 to 10. Now, there are certain reasons why you need to know this, which I'll take you through further. Let's remember the number of participants is normally between 8 to 10. The amount of time allotted to you is usually between 10 to 20 minutes. No one will give you a topic and say, all right, you have the rest of the day. Have your discussion and give me the answer. This is the issue. They'll give you a case study. You have the rest of the day. Discuss it. Give me a solution. No, you never have the rest of the day because in life, we don't have full days to do anything. So you get 10 to 20 minutes for your group discussion. Normally, your case study or topic will be pre-decided by the person who is assessing you. There will be an assessor who will not really be part of your table. If I walk in for an interview tomorrow, I have my 10 people or 8 people sitting around me and I will have an assessor probably sitting there or at the table but he will not contribute. All the assessor does is gives you your topic. If he wants to appoint a chairperson or a leader, he will do that. And then they are silent observers, silent participants. They are just looking. They are watching. And remember, they're not only looking at the people who are speaking, but if you're sitting there and listening, they know that. Which is why I say, if you're listening the remaining 70-80% of the time, you have a successful group discussion. Judging is by that assessor is based on listening, contribution of ideas, conflict resolution. Are you really understanding the topic? Have you understood what topic it is they've given you? Because like I said, they're not going to tell you, okay, sit down, now talk. No. They will give you a topic. They will give you a situation and they will expect a result and they will make that very clear. Are you contributing? Did you understand it? What do you do if you don't understand a topic? It's simple. You ask. If you're not sure of what a topic means, there's no harm in asking someone what it really means. If you're part of the discussion a little later and now you haven't understood, you're obviously not going to stop a discussion to say, hey, I want to contribute, explain, stop your discussion and explain the topic to me. No. But what are you going to do? You're going to sit there, listen for five minutes. Once you've understood the topic, that's when you start speaking. Now, all of this, all these little, little things, where you nod, how you sit, do you play with your face, do you rub your eye, are you taking notes, are you quoting other speakers, all of this is being gauged, is being rated, is being observed when you're in a group discussion. Do you make, you know, do you have a bad expression when someone expresses what they feel? Do you smile at people when you talk? Do you smile when someone else is speaking and you're listening? Do you excuse yourself if you need to get up? Do you excuse yourself if you have a question? How do you disagree with people? All of this is being tested in every single group discussion, whether there is an assessor or not. 
whether it is a discussion between your boss and your team your boss is observing he may not say it right away but he or she is observing these little little things they are very very important when it comes to being successful at a group discussion now we spoke about a whole list of things that are being observed that your boss is looking at that your assessor is marking you on let's learn how to be good at this whole list of things what are the things we need to keep in mind when we say listening when we say speaking when we say excusing yourself when we say leadership facilitation what does all of this mean to summarize what i said about what an organization looks at let's go through that once more before carrying on one an organization when you're speaking when you're in for an interview is testing your knowledge on certain subjects here is where the current affairs comes into play because even if your subject is abstract like do aliens exist is there life on mars do ghosts exist these are all these are topics that you may or may not be able to support with facts but you can still use your current affairs all that knowledge you got by watching the news you can use that not only in parties with friends but even in formal interviews because you can quote what has happened maybe 2 months ago they found crop circles there was no explanation they found sources of water on the moon recently or last year they found life on mars they found a plant on mars you know there are a number of things that come in that newspaper many of them we laugh at but laugh at them even then use them so here is where your current affairs comes into play read keep yourself updated with what's happening around you you never know when you can use that you can use it in a group discussion in that case your assessor your company the organization they know that you have a certain bit of knowledge on something or the other newspapers are full of various topics so we are not restricted to our textbooks i'm a science student i know only about science no i know about geography and the tsunami and what kind of landscape is where because i re- read the newspaper so keep your knowledge updated keep your current affairs updated keep your skills when it comes to group discussion updated with the help of all of us what an organization is also testing is your ability to think now i may have read very well i come i sit down in a group discussion my assessor has given me the topic and i start i've probably read you know adolf hitler's biography and the topic of discussion today is adolf hitler was he justified in what he did or where did hitler go or things like that the question is am i using someone else's script am i quoting someone else am i simply talking out of memory of what i read in his biography or am i also listening and thinking i can have a lot of knowledge but the idea of a discussion is not to narrate an entire paper written on adolf hitler the idea of a discussion is to say what you have then to listen to what the person in front of you is saying the person on the side of you is saying person number 7 8 and 9 are saying and then to respond to that you may know 10 things about hitler but in your 20 minute discussion you all may end up discussing only two out of those 10 points it's all right i am talking about how adolf hitler committed suicide and the person in front of me reacts and talks about his childhood in comparison to why he you know ended up committing suicide if he did we really don't know i'm really not sure but if he did why did he end, end up doing that the question is am i listening and responding to the point made on his childhood or am i saying no stop this is how he started becoming a dictator Oh no 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 wait there's more to Adolf Hitler this was his life story this is where he was born blah 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 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 and i have taken them through the entire biography there's no point in that am i thinking i'm not thinking i'm remembering 
is something I have by hearted and I'm narrating that. I'm not thinking. You're thinking when you're listening and you're responding. When your communication circle is complete, I talk, you understand, you listen, you respond, I listen, I respond. Communication is from one person to the other. So an organization is also testing not only your knowledge on the subject but even how much you are thinking before responding to a point someone has made in your group discussion. Besides your knowledge and your thinking, what else is being tested in group discussion? Your language skills. Now when I say language skills, I don't mean only grammar. How correctly you're speaking, that's not the only thing that's being tested. How well you're speaking, your communication is also being tested. Besides your grammar, your pronunciation, because tomorrow if I need to deal with a client from America, I need to know how to speak English. If I'm dealing with the local market, I need to know how to speak the local language. Whether it's Punjabi, whether it's Gujarati, whether it's Marathi, whether it's Kannada. I need to know the local language to deal with the local people. And if I'm dealing with foreign clients, I need to know their language. So your language skills are being tested based on what position you're in. In an interview, they're being tested based on what position you're applying for. In an appraisal, they're being tested based on what promotion, what new position you're looking at. If they're looking at a representative to go to China, if I know Chinese, I get a plus point. I don't know Chinese, I wish I did, but whatever language I know, somewhere or the other, it may help out. So your language skills are also being tested and it's fair enough. Nobody's saying if I don't know Chinese that, you know, I can't work. No, I just don't work in China. Simple. So, let your language skills be tested. Don't be worried about how you speak in case you feel you do not have the appropriate language skills. And if you feel that again, work on it because it is important to an organization. They are not here to gauge who can do what. They are just here to gauge what can you do. So, allow them to test your language skills. Coming back to what I said about communication, when I say they are also testing your communication skills, what I mean is, how do you speak? Are you too loud? Are you too soft? Are you stammering? Are you nervous while expressing your point? Just because someone else disagreed with you, did you keep quiet after that and sit down? Do you speak entire sentences correctly or do you become soft towards the end of your sentence? Are you soft when you are asking questions? I, you know, confidence is a must in any kind of role. Tomorrow if I am confident by any chance I make a mistake. People make mistakes. If I am confident enough I can pick up from where I left and I can do that even in a group discussion. I make a mistake, I say something wrong, I say Adolf Hitler died in the year 1930 instead of saying the year 1945. If I'm confident enough, I will stand up and say, I'm sorry, let me correct myself, it was the year 1945. I hope I'm right with that. So, this is how confidence, this is how your communication is tested even through your confidence. Because tomorrow, if I said 1930 and someone says, hey, it's 1945, and I go into a nutshell and keep quiet and don't talk after that, what is the point of me being part of a discussion? I might as well write chits and say, this is how much I know. So, be confident. Let your language flow. Don't use complicated words. The idea is to get your thinking, to get your knowledge, to get your thoughts across. The idea is to convince the other person that you are right, if that is the case. The idea is to find a resolution to the case study given to you. The idea is not to show off how much English you know. So I can use all the words from the dictionary, the most complicated ones. I can start using French words for all I know. But if no one understands me, there's no point of that. So keep your language simple. Keep your communication, your sentences short. Use appropriate words. Appropriate to the situation. Yes, tomorrow if you're talking to a group of authors, I'm sure their language is at the same level or 
at a high level enough to understand complicated vocabulary. In that case, go ahead, use it. But even in that case, if you keep your sentences simple and short and use simple words, there's no harm. People are understanding what you're saying and that is what is important. Knowledge, ability to think, language and communication skills. The next thing that a company is testing are your team skills. What are team skills? Team skills are not whether you can get your teammates to stand in attention and say hail Hitler. Team skills are how approachable you are. When you walk by, does your team turn around and smile at you? When you walk into the office, think about this. When you walk into your classroom, when you walk into college, when you walk into your office, wherever you are today, do people acknowledge you? Do you end up saying hi and good morning to a lot of people or is it just those one or two people that you know? If you're working in a team, are there two people in your team who look away when you walk in? Are there two people in your team you're already fighting? Is there one person? Is there half a person in your team who you're always fighting with? If the answer to this is yes, then you need to work on your team skills. And again, listening is a very, very important part in this. Tomorrow, when I walk into a group discussion, do I have a smile on my face? Do I bring in positive vibes? Or am I looking down on everybody and saying, you all don't deserve to be here. It should be only me. Team skills come from you. You cannot blame your team if you don't have good team skills. Team skills are all about your relationship with people in your team. And how do you work on that? By listening. Giving directions, giving instructions, giving orders is very easy. Making your people want to do something on their own is the tricky part. I can walk in, I can be, like I said, Adolf Hitler. All my work is getting done, people are coming to office on time, people are leaving not before time, people are taking short breaks, they do not take any extra coffee breaks, tea breaks, no kind of extra break being happening. People don't walk from one place to the other to talk to people. People don't discuss things amongst themselves. All they do is sit at their workstation and work. Am I a good boss? Am I a good leader? Are my team skills good? No. I can be part of even an interview or group discussion first time. It's the first time I'm meeting the eight people around me. But I can be so commanding that throughout that discussion only I speak. Throughout that discussion if anyone has a point, if anyone argues, I stand up right away and say, hey, you're wrong. And this is why you're wrong. After that, that person doesn't speak. I do that eight times, all eight people are out, my point wins. I summarize, I say, so this is what we've decided. Does that mean my group discussion has been successful? No. Just because everyone kept quiet when you argued with them, just because your point was heard right in the end, just because you suggested that A, B, C be done, and A, B, C was done in the end, does not mean you're a winner. That assessor sitting there, remember, is assessing you even on your team skills. Did you encourage people to speak? Now team skills, facilitation skills, leadership skills, we'll discuss this separately later. Let's take this as one now. Being a good facilitator, being a good team member, being a good leader. Did you encourage people to speak? Did people want to share something after you spoke? Did you explain yourself clearly enough so that everyone understood? Did you look at everybody there? Did you smile at everybody? Did you respond when they asked you a question or contradicted or supported your point? Did you say thank you when someone says, hey, I agree with her? This is how your team skills, your facilitation skills and your leadership skills are being tested. So here are the things that a company tests when you walk in there and when you're part of a group discussion, not only whether your idea was the best or not. 
because you are not expected to give the best idea or the best solution. You are expected to be the one responsible for reaching that solution. That's when you stand out. When you have that confidence and you're brave enough to accept another person's idea as better than yours. That is when you stand out. That is when you're a good leader. That is when you will be successful at that table of 10 people who are going through a group discussion with you. Now we've spoken a lot about what is being tested in group discussions. We've spoken about why we need group discussions. Let's again touch quickly upon what are the things that help us when we work towards being that good leader, work towards our language, work towards our thinking, work towards facilitation. There's a lot of work to be done. Why should we work towards all of this? Why should we, we be the best at that table? Why should we even be good at that table? Why can't we just sit quiet and listen? Why? Because group discussion helps you with one, understanding a subject. Like we said, if there's a topic I don't understand, I sit in a group of 10 people and listen. I've understood. Group discussion helps you think critically because you have a room full of people who are thinking of the exact same thing at the exact same time. A group discussion will force you to think with them. It forces you to get used to the concept of not leaving things for the next day. Every statement you're saying is being carefully read. It helps you practicing thinking importantly because you know every statement you're saying is being heard, is being carefully read and someone is waiting to pounce back if you make a mistake. So it helps you think sense and not just make loose statements. That's a very important, important thing that we all should work towards and we know that. When you make a loose statement, it has terrible, terrible consequences. A group discussion helps you solve problems just like that. There's a huge problem sitting on your head. You just can't think of where to go and how to find this answer to the problem. What do you do? You call a panel of 10 people, you brainstorm. You say, hey, listen, this is the problem. Let's find solutions. You have 10 minds working towards one solution. That is how a group discussion helps you. It gives you different points of view. If I have a new decision in my company that needs to be implemented tomorrow, what do I do? I call one representative from each department. I call someone from HR. I call someone from compliance. I call someone from security. I call someone from housekeeping. I call someone from technology. I call someone from training. I call somebody from content. Every department of my organization, marketing, sales, customer service, every department, I call one one person, I have a group discussion, we all get a chance to share our own ideas. Tomorrow, if as a company I want to implement a new rule, I put forth that rule on my table and I let all these representatives from me, these different departments talk and discuss how this new rule, this new policy will affect their department. We discuss it, we find a solution, we change what needs to be changed and then we move on and implement that policy or that rule. You know how that one day group discussion has helped? Now every single department has a representative who knows that somewhere this new policy, this new concept will help us because they've discussed it, because they've raised the same questions that their team will raise tomorrow and I have given them or someone else has given them the answer to it. So each department has that one representation who can handle any conflict that arises from my new policy. I hope you're following me here. So I've implemented a new policy and at the same time, only with the help of one single group discussion, make sure that the change is managed by one person in each of my 10 departments, my 100 locations. I have my representation to manage all the questions that arise.
if I would not have had that group discussion, I can stand up and say, all right, today onward, so and so is our policy. And today onward, what we are going to do is implement it. Do what you want. I will have unhappy people in my organization, which I don't want. So when your organization is selecting you for a particular role, when a new organization is hiring you, they have a group discussion, they are judging these skills. When your current organization is giving you a promotion and they make you sit in a group discussion, this is why they are making you do it. Not because they are wasting time, but they are testing whether you have the qualities to even head a department tomorrow. They want leaders. Your managing director is looking for help, he's help and support and subordinates. He's looking for managers, he's looking for senior managers, he's looking for people who can lead. Because please understand, if you have a company you're working for tomorrow, your company has these many responsibilities, your managing director has these many responsibilities, your responsibility is a little dot over there. The minute you can the more you can handle, if your managing director finds someone who can handle all those responsibilities, he's going to be happy. Why? Because now he gets a chance to increase his organization. He gets a chance to take his organization on a state level, on a national level, and then on an international level. And after on an international level of opening up maybe and starting a new line of work, there is no end to growth. There is no end to growth till you decide it needs to end. So no matter how and what level you are at, how you have reached that level, tomorrow you need to have these skills, you need that punch in your group discussion to make sure you are the best, to make sure you are good, to make sure you not only have good ideas to contribute, but you are a good leader. This is how a group discussion helps. Another way a group discussion helps you is one, to improve your communication and listening. Let's face it, sometimes we aren't good listeners. So when you're part of a group discussion, every person just like you, every other person in that room is trying to do their best, is trying to speak and make their points and is listening. So are you listening? It's giving you practice to listen when other people speak up to make their points. Another thing a group discussion does is it increases your confidence. It increases confidence not only in speaking, but it also makes you more confident to speak up in front of people. Many of us have stage fright and when we are standing in front of a panel of people, that stage fright comes back. So you hold a rock in your hand, you hold a paper in your hand, you hold your pen and you fidget. The more group discussions you have, the more practice you get, the more confidence you can develop within yourself to handle tomorrow's role, to handle tomorrow's responsibility, to make a good impression in tomorrow's world. Now these are the different things that are being tested when we talk about group discussion. Let's go a little further. Let's rethink and revise what are the breakup of things that come under this list of skills that group discussions help you with. What I'm going to give you are a few tips in making the most of a group discussion when you're in that room. Making the most of it. Making the most again does not mean you walk out a winner in the sense that people are listening only to you, making the most of it means that you make a good impression, you are liked by people, you can get people to listen to you, that is what making the most of a group discussion is. The first point we discuss here is making the most of that parameter of communication skills that's being tested. People are testing your communication skills, right? How do you work on it? The most important aspect sometimes in a group discussion is to see whether the, you as a candidate, you as a member of the company, you as repre a representative of your department can talk effectively. Talking effectively refers to not just speaking clearly or speaking good English but making an impact on the other people. 
not forcing people to follow your point by being very loud but convincing them of your idea all of this contributes to a good and effective group discussion so make sure you're being precise and clear when you're communicating clarity of thought clarity in the way you're speaking don't let people ask you sorry what did you say another thing to remember speak only as much as necessary don't keep talking if out of 20 minutes you talk for 18 minutes does not mean you're good it means you're not giving the other people a chance to listen if you find the need to disagree with someone then disagree with their point if you don't want to disagree it doesn't mean just because that person made a correct point you're going to lose those point you know marks on your group discussion no if a person made a correct point if a person made a sensible point stand up and say great i agree with you and this is why i agree with you and share your own ideas if you disagree with someone even then stand up say great thank you for sharing that however this is what i feel and this is why i would disagree with your point and give them a chance to support their point so speak only as much as necessary do not debate this is not a debate this is not an argument this is a discussion do not like i said oppose every single point a person says you don't have to put them down you just have to reach your ultimate goal of a discussion listen listen when people talk what's very important to remember is to listen but not react even if a person is saying something if you've made a point and a person is disagreeing with you and you want to support your point sure you have a full right to go ahead and support your point but don't put that person down don't stand up and say no you're wrong stand up and say or sit down and say thank you for your contribution nina thank you for your ideas nina on my topic or my point let me explain why i would still agree with my point of view doesn't it really help doesn't it sound great this is what effective communication is about keep these few things in mind and that will take care of your communication aspect of group discussion another thing we spoke about was how a company tests your knowledge and ideas so let's see what we can do to make sure when someone is testing us on our knowledge and ideas we are making an effective impact on them one like we discussed in the beginning of our video today is reading make sure you are reading well you are reading the correct things reading only femina miss india or cosmopolitan will not help read business india read about cars read newspapers read magazines that why not read magazines that talk about bollywood and hollywood but read what information you feel you can use and then some more clarity of ideas can also be uh, quite dicey when it comes to expressing yourself make sure you're choosing the correct words make sure you are clear in your head like we said if you need to disagree with someone only then disagree with them be clear of why you're telling someone that you don't agree with them it's very common in group discussions we start disagreeing with everybody no wait pause be clear of why you're disagreeing with a person and read to be sure you are expressing and you show you have the knowledge because when you know something you are also confident when you are speaking and that makes a better impact on whoever it is who's watching you during the group discussion whether it's your mother whether it's a friend whether it's your boss whether it's an assessor in an interview it makes a better impact when you're confident and you have knowledge about a particular subject if you don't know what you're talking about don't talk wait and listen and think of where you can contribute and where you actually know what needs to be said another aspect that we said companies are looking at is leadership now few things you need to keep in mind to make a good impact when a company looks at leadership is one remember that an a group discussion is not led by the examiner it's not led by that person who's assessing you it's led by one person on your table and that person could be you how do you lead a group discussion 
you volunteer to introduce the topic to the group if it's not already been done. You as a leader protect your group so you give everyone a chance to speak. You as a leader listen if someone you feel is trying to speak but is not confident enough to make their point pause look at them and say hi Sonia you haven't really contributed anything is there something you'd like to say of course remember don't make them feel left out if it looks like they have something they have to say then pause and ask them give them that chance that they're looking for if they're hiding from the discussion and they don't want to talk don't embarrass them when they want to talk they will or at least you'll make out that they want to speak lead your table from every angle lead it like a leader would lead his tribe a leader would lead his team don't lead it like you want to prove to be the best lead it from your heart lead it like you would lead a younger brother or sister you would make your point when you're talking to your younger brother or sister but you'll give them a chance to learn you'll give them a chance to speak and you'll be patient when you express or disagree with them lead like that person I'm not saying buy them chocolates all I'm saying is give them a fair chance that's what a true leader does that is something organizations are testing every now and then because I explained to you leaders are wanted they want a leader they're not tomorrow if I have a manager my manager is not threatened if he feels I have good leadership skills he does not feel that oh my god if I hire this person this person may take my job away no he is happy when he hires a person with good leadership skills because that means that person can take on your manager's responsibility and the manager can grow further. So lead your table, show off your skills as a leader. Another thing that company is testing is your exchange of thoughts. How easily do you speak? How easily are your thoughts being conveyed and listened to? How do you work on this and make a good impact? One, contribute ideas in a short time. Don't go on and on speaking about an idea. Contribute it, keep it simple, explain it well. Do not give one idea after the other. Express one idea, throw it open to the table. Then use your next point to support this idea. Don't say, my points are one, two, three, four, five. No, my point is one. What do you have to say? That is a discussion not leading it in the form of Hitler like we discussed earlier you're not a dictator you're being a leader you're being part of a group discussion you give other people a chance to discuss you're there to discuss right um, comprehension of the main idea is also being tested when it comes to thoughts did you understand the subject so if you don't understand ask somebody or pay attention listen to the discussion you will understand it don't give up and sit down saying oh I don't know what this word means listen get an understanding of the topic before you speak build rapport well smile at people nod when people are speaking give them acknowledgement yes I'm listening to you aha uh -huh. I agree I disagree be patient don't interrupt a person very often when someone has made a point and we want to make our point we either interrupt or if you're not interrupting what we end up doing is start thinking how we can interrupt what happens there is you lose out on what point is being made and you misunderstand so when you're listening be patient and listen be accommodate, accommodating let other people talk give them a chance as well and take your chance remember there are 10 people at your table and only 20 minutes and just like you everyone wants their two minutes of fame so I'm not saying restrict yourself to 20 minutes if you get the chance yes go ahead and speak but talk sense and let another person finish what he's saying another crucial idea another another crucial point that you need to keep in mind while making the most of your group discussion is body language and eye contact look at people when you're talking to them do not look down and speak look people in the eye smile use gestures body language very important you don't sit like this on a table 
you don't scratch your hair you don't straighten your jewelry you don't rub your eye you don't bite your nails you keep two hands on the table elbows off rest your hands on the table keep them like this in front of you keep your back straight don't rock in your chair don't swing your chair left to right keep your hand back straight chin up look around smile use your gestures don't sit on the table don't drum your fingers on the table body language shows how serious you are about that discussion body language shows that you are there by your mind you're there mentally and physically mind and body both are there that's what people want they need you to be there when you're there dreaming of how you can change this company from a small town small in scale industry to an a multinational but not being there in the moment while they're discussing a certain issue that is there today in this small scale industry and instead of paying attention to the issue you're sitting thinking oh what uh, what should i do in which all company uh, countries can i open what all branches we can have what are the industries we can diversify into instead of getting into all that you be there and solve this problem now be there with your mind and your body very very important in a group discussion another few points that will really help you make a good impact is practicing a few skills while addressing a group one always address the group as a whole i would like to tell everyone here today or i welcome everybody today do not address individual people because it's a group discussion it's not a one on one address the person sitting the farthest from you if you are talking only to the person sitting next to you or right in front of you the entire table may not be able to hear you and they will not feel like they are part of your discussion so look at the last person the person sitting farthest from you and try and address them that takes care of your voice as well as of making sure everyone around you feels comfortable avoid repeating your points this is another thing that really helps in a group discussion do not keep saying the same thing again and again and keep your language simple keep your sentences short keep your language simple keep your vocabulary simple we've already discussed this let people understand what you're saying that's what's important in a group discussion finally to conclude what all we're doing what all we can do what are the things we need to keep in mind and those little tips that i said i'll give you on group discussion another few things that are being tested something i like to call the skill set toolkit something i call that little toolkit that helps you develop the exact skills remember four things one interpersonal this will cover everything we've discussed till now remember they are testing your interpersonal skills one what are interpersonal skills how well you get along with people how well do people listen to you do people like you or not simple let them like you not because you're buying them gifts but because you're approachable you're a you're a positive person you're a happy person you don't have you know your body language does not convey disgust or irritability it conveys a smile and ha being happy to persuasive skills how easily can you convince them how easily do people agree with you you need to have persuasive skills practice on everything we've discussed so far you'll have those persuasive skills your reaction your body language your smile your listening skill set toolkit point number 3 the third tool is problem solving skills are you good at solving problems or do you make a bigger mess out of a current problem are you patient in a crisis situation this is the third tool the first was interpersonal the second was persuasive persuading people the third tool was problem solving and finally we come to the fourth tool in my skill set toolkit and that is of conceptualization what is conceptualization are you able to only solve problems in one room or are you able 
to take day to day activities to a bigger level and solve bigger problems how well can you conceptualize how well can you see what is coming next and convince people that you're seeing what is coming next so these four things persuasive interpersonal problem solving and conceptualization these four things are what you will display when you work on everything we've discussed so far everything we've spoken about so far comes into this skill set toolkit practice these four things again interpersonal persuasive problem solving and conceptualization practice these four and you will be great with your group discussion